and on Monday, British Rail's brand new Tees Time Pullman is relaunched on that line. Today, though, as further south, the famous York Railway Museum was celebrating its 10th anniversary. The 1985 high-speed train left the central station in Newcastle and broke three world speed records by the time it arrived at King's Cross in London. Alistair Harrison sent us this report from the other end, of course. The purpose of this journey is really twofold. One is to reintroduce the old luxury Pullman style to the trains on the main East Coast Railway line. And the second is to try and break the speed record between Newcastle and London. This train is going to try and do it in two and a half hours. That's 22 minutes less than it's ever been done before. And already they've hit drama because during the night thieves ripped up some signalling cable at Chesterley Street and even now with about 40 minutes to go workmen are frantically trying to get that cable replaced. Well, in fact, the signal cables were repaired in time and we pulled out of Newcastle bang on schedule at 11.10. In no time at all, we were speeding south for what was to be a most memorable trip. Not just for the sheer speed of it, but for the service. This was the good old-fashioned Pullman style of best possible service. But why have British Rail decided to bring it back? We feel that um, since the Pullman service ceased a number of years ago, um, there has been a growing demand that people, particularly business people, want something better than our existing first-class service. They want individual attention, a nicer decor. And um, we feel that Pullman is a name which has lived in many, many people's memories, and uh, it has a place in the modern world. Shortly after leaving Darlington, the train reached maximum speed, just over 143 miles an hour. Well, we're now on the fastest part of the track with a train topping 140 miles an hour and approaching York, where Peter Holland is waiting with another rail story, albeit a very different one. Well, Alistair, alongside me as your Pullman approaches is a train that hit the headlines almost half a century ago when it broke the world speed record, the Mallard. This amazing loco, whose 126 mile an hour steam record of 1938 will never be beaten, is on the move for the first time since her retirement. She's in the middle of restoration here at the National Railway Museum, but the drivers determined the two trains should salute each other. It's a great sense of relief, it's a great sense of achievement, I suppose, and, you know, the world's fastest steam locomotive. Uh, I feel very honoured. <laughs> the old girl came up and put it into forward gear, opened the regulator and it moved forward, and uh, marvellous. No, they built them well. <laughs> so from the star of yesteryear, back to today's Pullman, where I'm sure Alistair is in the bar or dining room by now. And on this train, you don't have to go to find the bar, you don't have to go to find the dining car. It all comes to you in Pullman tradition. I've got a friend of mine here with me who is unashamedly a fan of the old Pullman's bill, aren't you, Bill Weeks? Oh, yes, indeed, uh, Alistair. Yes. What did you like about them? Uh, the thing I liked about the old Pullman, you mentioned the bar, the thing I liked was the Hadrian bar car, which was literally a club car. You used to get on at King's Cross at 5 o'clock in the evening, John Bell would be there, the leeches. Oh, you knew everybody in the car, the people from Clark Chapman, the vice Chancellor of the University, all the people who were bringing prosperity to the northeast would be in that Hadrian Bar car under the paternalistic, kindly rule of Harry Bester, then conductor. Absolutely marvellous. And another feature of this train, you can actually use the telephone to ring the office. Hi, David Alistair. Great news from King's Cross. We have not done it in two and a half hours. We've actually done it in about two hours and 20 minutes. And so we arrived into King's Cross. Just an incredible two hours, 19 and a half minutes. 
after leaving Newcastle. An amazing trip and a champagne reception for the driver, Bob McManus. Oh, it's fantastic, the front three is very smoothly. We did exactly what we set out to do and uh, we achieved it. And I think it's a great honour for the North East and especially the Newcastle men. Any problems? No problems, whatever. No problems. Really? Yeah. Well, we set out, we did it and uh, the, the proof is in the pudding, isn't it? <laughs> we're here. Alistair probably yet it. Alistair Harrison and Peter Holland enjoying a day out on the railways. By the way, for all you train enthusiasts, those three records were as follows. The fastest ever train journey between Newcastle and King's Cross, 269 miles in 2 hours, 19 minutes and 37 seconds, half an hour faster than ever before. A highest recorded speed for a diesel train at 145 miles an hour, a new world record there, and another world best, an average speed on the entire journey of 115.16 miles an hour. Weather. Streamline train, fastest train to run. Hard working stranger, I ain't gonna. 31 minutes off the record time between Newcastle and London. The train reached a top speed of 145 miles per hour completing the 268-mile journey in 2 hours, 19 minutes and 37 seconds. Its average speed over the whole journey was over 115 miles per hour. Never been done before. The Special Express covered the 268 miles at an average of 115 miles an hour and broke two records in the process. Fifty years ago today, the Silver Jubilee made it in four hours, when British Rail admits it was a more sedate service. But it says the days of greater luxury are returning, with the introduction of a new Teestine Pullman from Monday. This journey was to herald the start of that, and have a crack at the speed record between the two cities. The record stood until today at two hours, 51 minutes. As we came into King's Cross, confirmation that this train had knocked half an hour off the previous fastest time between Newcastle and London. This journey was done in two hours, 19 minutes and 37 seconds. Celebrations and a promise from British Rail that they won't be going quite so fast on Monday.